Welcome. I'm Julie Bacon, and you're listening to the Mindset Coaching for Handlers podcast, a podcast for dog handlers who are on a mission to achieve big goals. Here I share lessons, insights, personal stories, and tools you can apply during your next show, trial, or test to help you strengthen your mental game and hopefully cue more consistently. Be sure to check out the show notes where you'll find details about the episodes, plus important links, including the link to the Dogged Planner and Workbook created just for handlers on a mission. So if you're ready to improve your competitive mindset, get out of your own way, and connect with your dog like never before, then it's time to get comfy, bring an open mind, and work your mindset. Hey there, and welcome back to the podcast. Okay, this week we're talking about what it means to have potentially too much input, okay? And what that does to our brains and why we want it, why we want all the input. So, you know, those of us who are on this like competitive journey and have these goals and, you know, have maybe have multiple dogs or just have all of these things we want to accomplish, we are on a mission, Okay, we are on a mission and nothing is going to stop us. And so much of that is, for many of us, is a love of learning or a want of having more and more input so that we can better ourselves and keep leveling up to the next level, to the next level, to the next level. And what happens sometimes along the way is as we go around and we collect all of this input, all of this data, maybe from a few trainers, maybe from a whole bunch of trainers and online courses and seminars and all of this stuff. And then if you, we compound that and we layer in the fact that those, some of us are doing multiple sports, we can almost bury ourselves in input. You know, we can have, you know, I, we always joke, right? Dog people are not short on opinions, okay? We all have many, many opinions, sometimes conflicting opinions on the same topic, right? You know, we, I always joke that if you put, you know, five people in the room, ask them one question, you can get 10 different answers, okay? I mean, there's just no shortage of opinions. And what happens along those lines as well is, you know, we have different trainers with different perspectives. Heck, different podcasters with different perspectives. And it's great because sometimes people will say the same thing, but in a slightly different way. And you, the light finally goes on. You're like, oh my God, finally, someone explained it in a way that I actually understand it. Thank you so much. Okay. And that's great. Those moments, those light bulb moments are precious, priceless, all the things. And, um, but sometimes we go around, you know, collecting information and lessons as though we're trick-or-treating, you know? And what do we do with all this information? We're just shoving it in a bag to like go into our rooms and sort it out later, I guess, right? And figure out what stays and what doesn't. But more often than not, that all of that input ends up overwhelming us. Because if we're not able to discern what fits us, ourselves, our dogs, our teams, our way of doing, um, and what doesn't, then we're kind of hard pressed to do anything with it, right? I know people who are like addicted to seminars and they will go like to more seminars than they do trials, right? In just this quest of learning, but then they come back and they don't, either they don't do anything with it or they come back from one seminar and they do that, but then they go to another seminar the next month and they're like, oh my God, I should do it this way. And they're, they're not sticking to any one thing or they don't really have a great way to discern what is best for them. And the underlying issue there is that they respect these people. I mean, I respect these people. I go to seminars all the time. I definitely, you know, I respect the people that I'm paying money to, to learn. And so I figure if I'm going to go to a seminar, I'm going to try to do the thing that they're telling me to do. I'm going to try their perspective. I'm going to take their feedback and take it to heart. So we have to figure out a balance. We have to figure out a way to take in all that feedback, but also make it make sense right? We have to figure out how it can make sense for our situation, for our dogs, for where our dogs are in their progression, for where we are in our progression. You know, I've, I love going to seminars where I'm, what I'll say, overfaced. I don't know if that's a common term, but it's, I guess it's a horse term or a sports term where like, 
I'm in over my head, basically, right? I love being pushed to the point where I'm in over my head. <laughs> Most people would call that terrifying. I call that great joy, <laughs> okay? Um, because I love, I enjoy being pushed and I love taking that input. Yet at the same time, having a non, let's, let's, let's be nice and call mine a non-traditional breed <laughs> at an agility seminar, Okay, where some people would be like, why are you bringing that thing to an agility seminar? But let's go with non-traditional breed in a nice way. Um, You know, sometimes some of that feedback isn't for me. You know, I'm not going to do a thousand backsides with a hundred pound dog. It's just not going to be my handling choice sometimes, not all the times, but like, and I'm oversimplifying, obviously. But like sometimes the tricky thing is just physically difficult and there might be a better choice when I'm in a competition. I still want to learn the skill. I still want to be exposed to the learning. I still want as a handler to be getting better, but I might come home, sort through my notes and be like, that's amazing. I want to learn that for me, but that doesn't suit dog number one. That might be great for dog number three, but that's, yeah, that. And so we have to do that exercise. We have to come home from seminars or training or our, all these wonderful online classes or even podcasts and decide like what is for me and what is not for me and what is great information, but just doesn't suit my program or the dogs that I have right now. And maybe we make a note, maybe we say like, oh man, one day I wanna have a dog that I can do you know, international skills with or something like that. And some of you listening are already there and some of you are also hoping that one day you can do that, okay? But it's okay if all of the feedback that you're getting isn't for you. Okay, which is sort of a weird thing to say, because, again, you're paying these trainers and these instructors or these seminar teachers or clinicians or whatever you want to call them for all this great information. And I'm not saying don't get the information. Please go get the information. Like I said, I love to be in over my head at some of these things. But then we owe it to ourselves to figure out what we do with it, because I think sometimes we overwhelm ourselves in that in the gathering, right? In the gathering of all of this great information. And then when we overwhelm ourselves, we might be looking for the magic fix, not finding it so we continue on the search. All right. So we're going to talk about that part in the second half of this. But when we go to you know, whether you're going to your regular class or whether you're going to a new trainer or like I said, a seminar, or maybe you're getting, you're meeting up with someone at a trial or you're doing an online class, you owe it to your team to take that information and break it down, you know, break it down. And, you know, it's almost like, um, when we're cleaning out a closet, you know, is this a, to keep thing? Is this a not right now thing? Or is this a, this is not for me thing. Right. And maybe you put it in, in different buckets. You know, the, there's a lot of stuff that I learned that is a not right now stuff, or, you know, I do teach some foundational classes. And so I, I think, ooh, that would be a really great thing to teach my students. You know, maybe my own dog doesn't need it, but maybe I can pass that on. Or, ooh, maybe I should share this with somebody else who was just talking about this and what fun. So do that with your notes. Do that with what you're learning. Try to understand what it is that is for you right now or for future you or not for you at all. And that would really help you because you don't have, just because someone really smart and amazing told you something, it doesn't mean you have to do anything with it. Now, on the flip side, once you decide to keep it, do something with it, train it, put it on a three by five card and make a note of like, ooh, that's something I want to work on, or this is a skill I want to work on. And then when you don't know what you want to work on that day and you're off to training or something, just grab a a card out of the pile and be like, ooh, that, I'm going to work on that really cool skill today that I learned at that seminar or I learned online or what have you. Okay. So put, if you're keeping it, use it. And give it enough of a try to see if it will work. Because sometimes, sometimes we go to special things um, that are to like fix something or to help something or to just hone in on something. Like maybe you go to a weave seminar or something. And a lot of things will work if we give it enough chance. 
or a lot of things will work for certain dogs. So give whatever it is, give it a try. If you respect that piece of information, you want to incorporate it, then figure out how to incorporate it and train it and give it a try, right? Try it on, see how it fits, see if it is something that is good for you and your team. Okay. All right. So we're going to talk when I come back about like why some of us are just on this constant scavenger hunt for more information. Be right back. Hey everyone. I am so excited to share that we have our first sponsor on the podcast, St. Rocco. You might already know them for their amazing all natural jerky style treats, but did you know they also make entrees and food toppers with the same top notch ingredients? It's true. I've got to be honest, I'm a huge fan of these treats. I use them all the time, whether I'm training, at trials, or even when it's just nail trimming time. My dogs love them and it feels good to support a small business that genuinely cares about our dogs. And there's something special just for you. St. Rocco is giving Q listeners 20% off. Just use the code JB20 at checkout when you order from St. Rocco's treats.shop. That's S A I N T. R-O-C-C-O-S treats dot shop code JB20. I will also put a link in the show notes. Okay, not too long ago, we talked about how some of us are just needing feedback. You know, we, we long for feedback to tell us how we're doing. Are we, uh, are we, pro- how are we progressing? Are we on schedule? Are we behind? Are we ahead? You know, are we doing the right thing? We just, we long for that feedback. And especially if you are training for your, by yourself and not going to very many group classes, or you don't have a consistent uh, person giving you feedback on your progress, this can be especially acute. So sometimes we're going to more trainers or more people in, yes, a quest to get more information, but it's almost as though we're looking for feedback that we may or may not be getting. So we keep going down the road to the next person. And in most cases, we're doing just fine. (laughs) Okay. In most cases, we're progressing, we're moving along, we are taking in the information that we're getting. We're better, you know, today than we were a year ago, heck, for sure, five years ago. And all of the techniques that we're learning today are, you know, more progressive than they were five years ago. I know that the way I teach certain skills now is completely different than the way my first novice a dog and I learned. So, we're, sometimes we're in this quest to get more information because we're maybe unconsciously looking for something. We could be looking for feedback or input or an assessment on how we're doing. Or maybe we just keep going to these things because we want to understand if we're better than the last time we did this, you know, we're progressing or, you know, what's the assessment or what will this person say? Or maybe we just are really longing for someone to say like, Oh my God, you're doing so much better than before. You know, I, you know, I don't know. And by the way, again, go to the seminars. This is not a seminar slam. This has little to do with seminars and mostly to do with all of us who are seeking training and seeking information because sometimes we're looking for that one magic thing. If I'm personalizing, I will tell you that, you know, when I was struggling with Moxie's weave poles, that I was asking all the people, you know, you could have lined up a hundred different trainers and I would have asked every single one and I would probably have gotten 110 different ideas of things to fix. Right. And so in that moment, I was hungry I was lost. I was desperate. I was frustrated. I was like, oh my God, please, somebody, you know, just bring it down. I will pay anything. I will do anything. I will, you know, spin around three times, you know, eat eye of toad or foot of newt or whatever I've got to do, you know, make a potion to make this work for me. And so make sure to ask yourself that if you are a person who gathers all of this input, but you find yourself not really doing anything with it, you could be waiting for this one magic piece of input, or you would could be waiting for feedback, or you could be wanting something else. So sit with that idea of what it is that you're searching for, and what it is that you're not getting then, 
And so that once you realize that, now you can go in search of that missing piece. Now you can, you know, ask your trainer or ask your online help or your the next seminar or something for something very specific instead of just once again wandering in wide-eyed with a fresh notebook and a new pen and sitting down and hoping they solve your problems that you haven't told them about, right? So we have to like be not realistic, but we have to use our own critical thinking to figure out, well, what's logical? What is what is expected? What is realistic? Um, what should I expect? What am I looking for? And if you are going to a seminar or if you are signing up for something online or even going to your weekly group class, go with a goal. Go with a process goal or go with something you want to get out of it. Like if you're going to your like regular Tuesday class, like show up with something you want to work on specifically. Your instructor will be thrilled, by the way, as an instructor. Like also like I would be thrilled if someone walked in and be like, hey, this week, can we blah, blah, blah. Or if I got an email ahead of time saying, can you set this up in class next week? Because I, I would really want to work on this or I completely messed it up this past weekend in the trial. Okay, stop going to classes and just being not not a participant, right? You you want to be more um, participate participate more in your education, I guess is what I'm saying, and really figure out what it is that you're trying to get out of it, and then that way you'll know whether or not the seminar, the online class, even the weekly class was quote successful because you went in there with a a pre identified idea of what you wanted to get out of it. And then you'll be able to measure, well, did I? Did I get a little better at rear crosses? Did I get a little sharper on my figure eight this week? You know, what is it that I went to learn? And did I learn a way to apply that or help me? Okay. So I guess in summary, when we are feeling overwhelmed by all of the information that we are gathering, we need to take that as a sign to step back. Not step back from going and and gathering, but to step back from the information and look at it and say like, okay, hey, am I really using this information? How can I use this information? Maybe I do need to make some three by five cards and set up these challenges or practice these things because there really was a great takeaway. I mean, I've often said like if I go to a seminar or take an online class and I get one aha moment out of it, like for the whole weekend or the whole whatever weeks of the online class, I feel that's a success because it changes your perspective on something. And you're like, oh my God, someone told me blah, blah, blah in a different way or whatever. And I finally get it and life changing, ah, angels singing, like life is good, right? There's no better feeling and it's suddenly worth it. Well, then I want to write that down and I want to make sure that I am practicing that and I am using the skill or the perspective, maybe even, or just even the philosophy that I learned and can apply. So again, if you're getting overwhelmed, it's because you haven't sorted through what you're going to do with that information. And you're just amassing page after page after page of really smart notes in your journals, but not putting them to work and not trying them out and see if like, oh, that was, that didn't work at all. Or, oh my God, I wasn't practicing this. This is amazing. Or yeah, I forgot that this person told me this thing. I used to take amazing notes and I would keep them and I think, you know, I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to come back to this. And I didn't. And so I started taking notes differently, you know, in seminars and in online classes too of like, well, what is the takeaway? What is the thing I'm going to go do? What is my action step? Okay. Because if I can identify an action, now I know what to do with the information instead of it just swimming around in my head. The other thing to realize is that, yes, you are going to get conflicting information because you know what? Everybody's got different philosophies and everybody's got different ways of training and all kinds of things can work. It just depends. So it's up to you to match information to your dogs, to your situation, to your own experience and see if that fits you and see if that is that is appropriate for you and your team. Okay, so like your seminars, online courses, and group classes, I'm throwing a lot of stuff at you. (laughs) Okay. Um, So sort through it, figure out what it is that not only you are getting, but what you are still missing and what you are still seeking. 
and what you still want to be good at. And some people are on the hunt because they just want to absorb all the information possible and they're going to use it to teach other people. Or they want to have all different types of problem solving things in case it comes up. But other people are on a more specific journey to try to work on a piece of their handling um, or something more specific. So know what you are after because then that person will know how to help you whether it's directly or maybe it's indirectly through you reading your notes or watching your videos or, you know, kind of just taking stock of what it is that you learned during that time. All right. You, if you're getting overwhelmed with the information, it's probably because you haven't sat still long enough and really sorted through it and figured out how to put that information into action so that you can do the sorting method of like, it fits me, it doesn't fit me, or it might be something for the future. Okay. So do that yourself a favor. And for those of you who aren't in that mode, but have listened all the way to the end of this podcast, be really more interactive students, right? Come to class with some things that you want to work on, that you want to practice, maybe a little sequence that you tried over the weekend that you were like, you know what, every time this is set up, I always struggle with how to handle it. Um, And just bring that, be a more active student. And as a result, you will get more out of it because you're actually bringing a problem that you would like to try to solve or have, maybe you want a couple different ways to handle this. All right. And that will help all of you. That will help your teachers. It might help your other classmates. um, And it definitely will benefit you. Okay. All right. So this week, your homework is to just do that. Kind of assess where you are in your information gathering. And if you're listening to this and you're like, you know what? I haven't done any of this in ages. Like I don't do any of this. Then maybe you should ask like, well, is there any new information I want? Like, would this make my uh, learning more fun, you know, to go learn something new? So like I said, I'm more on the attic side. I love to learn. Anytime someone hangs up a seminar shingle, shingle, I am there. Um, But uh, in any case, I hope this helps you. And I hope it relieves some of the pressure of having to take take action on all of the information that you're getting from all of these great different sources. Okay. All right. No matter what you're doing with this week, I hope you have a fantastic time with your dogs. Thanks so much for listening to the Mindset Coaching for Handlers podcast with me, Julie Bacon. I am so grateful for your precious time. Check out my Dogged Planner workbook and journal available on Amazon. Just search for Dogged Planner. I also offer monthly membership that's perfect for ongoing support of your awesome goals. Check out thecuecoach.com for details or just stop by and check out all the ways you can work on your mindset. And be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram at The Q Coach and let me know how it's going. Finally, please share, subscribe, and leave a review. This helps us podcasters tremendously. Plus, I know I get my best podcast recommendations from friends. Thanks and have a great week with your dogs.